Today we will be looking at the freehand selection tool and briefly touch the pixel selections in Affinity Photo. The freehand selection tool can be found in the pixel selection tool group. Click and hold the mouse button to expand the group. The freehand selection tool is the last one in the group which looks like a lasso. The freehand selection allows you to make a freehand pixel selection by drawing with your mouse or a tablet pen. To make a freehand pixel selection, click and hold the mouse button on the document canvas and while the mouse is pressed, start drawing. When you release your mouse, the selection will be created. You do not need to end at your starting point. Once you release your mouse button, the tool automatically closes the area. Once you have created a selection, the selection will be shown by marching ends. If you want, you are able to move the selection. Once your mouse is in the selection area, the mouse pointer will change, indicating the selection can be moved if you start dragging with the mouse. Before moving on with the various options in the freehand selection tool, I want to point out a beginner's mistake with pixel selections which even I make from time to time. Once you have a pixel selection, you might think for example that you can delete the selected area. Well, this is partly true. Let me press delete. Well, that didn't go well, did it? The whole layer is deleted. Pretty confusing. The thing to keep in mind is that pixel selections in Affinity Photo have two main use cases. The first use case is the ability to select pixels and apply transformations to it. The second use case is setting a working area for other tools or pixel manipulation actions like filters or masks. So why does Affinity delete the whole layer? Well, the answer is simple. If we look closely to the selected layer in the Layers panel, we can see that this is an image layer. The pixel selection always works on pixels, and in Affinity you cannot change the pixels of an image layer. So it will delete the whole layer. Let me enable the Bird 2 layer, which as you can see is a pixel layer. If I now make a selection and press delete again, we encounter our next common mistake. The pixel selection tools always work on the selected layers in the layers panel. As the bird 1 layer was selected, it has removed that layer again. Let's undo that again. To summarize, if you want to transform, copy, paste or delete the selected areas, make sure you have a pixel layer selected. So when I make sure that I have the bird 2 layer selected, I can draw with the freehand selection tool and when I press the delete key, it will remove the pixels from the selected area. Now that we got that cleared, let's move to the various options of the freehand select tool. As with all the tools in Affinity, the options of the tool are shown in the top toolbar. The freehand selection tool has three types of operation. By default, the freehand type will be selected. When using the freehand type, the selection will be made on what you draw on the canvas. By the way, once you have a pixel selection, you can press the escape key or the command D key to clear the current selection. Let's have a look at the second type of operation, which is polygonal. We can still draw the selection as before, but when releasing the mouse, the selection will not be created. Instead, I can click on a point in the document canvas and a line will be drawn from the previous point. So we can just keep clicking to create straight lines. If I click and hold the mouse button again, the selection can be continued by drawing. To finish the selection, we can either double click or press the enter key on the keyboard. A cool feature in this operation type is that we can use the command Z or the undo action to go one step back in our selection activity. So if you accidentally draw a line, just press command Z to correct that. Pretty awesome. The final type of operation is magnetic. 
This mode is similar in use as the polygon, but instead of drawing lines by clicking, Affinity will check pixel values and try to snap to detectable borders. It kind of works. As you see, the snapping is difficult to control and you have to move slowly and preferably zoom in to do a good selection. I think this magnetic operation would have been much better if there was a setting for the magnetic tolerance value. Now it's a hit and miss. But luckily you can temporarily override the magnet by drawing the selection, which is just pressing and holding the mouse button. You can also click and force a note. What I also miss in the magnetic type of operation is the ability to change the added notes. Now, if the snapping went wrong, you can only use the undo function to fix it. One last thing to keep in mind with the magnetic snapping is that it will sample from the visible document canvas and not the current layer. Notice how it detects the text and the curves even though I am on a complete different layer. Time to move and talk about the different modes the pixel selection tools have. I will set the type back to freehand before moving on. The mode determines what will happen when you start a new selection. By default it is set to new. Every time I start a selection the existing selections will be discarded. The add mode will as you might have guessed adds the new selection to the current selection. Ideal to add areas you missed during the initial selection. Subtract is the opposite. Every new selection made will be subtracted from the current selection. This is useful if you accidentally selected an area. By using subtract you can remove it from your current pixel selection. The last mode is intersect. When this is selected, the intersection between the existing selection and the just drawn selection will become the new selection. If there is no intersection, the current selection will be discarded. Interesting side fact, you can never start with this mode, as you need a starting selection. The next option in the toolbar is the feather option, which determines the softness or the opacity of the transition at the end of the pixel selection. A feather value of 0 will have no transition. A high feather value will make the transition of the selection smoother. When the end to alias option is off, which is the default, pixels at the edges of the selection are opaque. When selected, the selection edges will become smooth by applying transparency to the edge pixels. This is very similar to feathering, but for high feather values, this option has no additional value. The last option in the toolbar is the refine button. The refine button deserves its own video, so I will skip this for this video. Now that we know all the operation types and the modes, let me share the modifier keys we can use. Pressing the shift key will enable the polygon mode. This works in freehand and magnetic type of operation. Using the control key before ending a selection will add the selection to the current selection. The option key does the opposite. It removes the selection from the current selection. These two modifier keys are quick ways to fine-tune your selection and fix accidental selections. We have one final key modifier to our disposal, which is the command key. If you keep the command key pressed, you can move the contents of the selection instead of moving the selection itself. You can also move the selection by selecting the move tool. The move tool has the additional option to transform the selected area, like resize or rotate. Check out my previous video about the move tool. Link is in the description. By the way, when doing transformations, it might be easier to turn off the marching ants. You can do this from the view menu and then toggle the show pixel selection menu item. As you notice, I have added a shortcut key for this in the preferences of Affinity, which allows me to quickly toggle the marching ends. 
As mentioned earlier, the pixel selections also restrict the pixel manipulation tools. For example, the Erase tool. If I use the Erase tool now, it will only erase the area of the selection. This is a great way to make sure you don't accidentally erase areas you want to keep. When you apply an adjustment while a pixel selection is active, the adjustment will only be applied to the selected area. This is done by using the selection as a mask for the adjustment. This wraps our video about freehand selection tool and using pixel selections. I hope you liked this video and found it useful. Thank you for watching and until the next video.